Today we will be discussing purple passion vine, Passiflora incarnata. And here you can see the native range for purple passion vine according to the Bone App website. Purple passion vine has several common names. Some of them are maypop, purple passion flower, purple passion vine, and apricot vine. Um, according to wildflower.org, purple passion flower is an herbaceous vine up to 25 feet long that climbs with auxiliary tendrils or sprawls along the ground. Intricate three inch lavender flowers are short stalked from leaf axils. The petals and sepals subtend a fringe of wavy or crimped hair like segments. The pistil and stamens are also showy. Three lobed deciduous leaves are dark green above and whitish below. The fruit is a large orange yellow berry with edible pulp. Like some other passion vines, maypop spreads by root suckers. This unusual flower is widely distributed in the southeast, especially from Florida to Texas. The name maypop comes from the hollow yellow fruits that pop loudly when crushed. Yellow passion flower, P. lutea, a small yellow flower species, occurs from southeast Pennsylvania to Florida, west to Texas and Oklahoma, and north to Missouri, Illinois, in West Virginia. According to the Missouri Botanical Garden.org website, purple passion flower is easily grown in average, medium, well drained soils in full sun to part shade. It's tolerant of drought. The roots appreciate a loose mulch, spreads by root suckers to cover large areas in optimum growing conditions. And Cutting back to my personal experience with it, I have a full sun front garden right now, and so all of my passion vine has full sun, except one plant that I did try to transplant to my side yard, and my side yard is kind of more shady. Um, I don't know the exact amount of sun it gets, but I would call it part shade or part sun, and in my experience, that vine didn't grow very well. Um, but it could have been because I transplanted it from another area of my garden, or it could have been because it was in the more shady area. I'm not really sure which, so take that with a grain of salt, but from what I can tell, it really prefers full, full sun, so keep that in mind when planting it. So I'm sure a lot of you are wondering my personal experience with this vine. And I think it's super important to go ahead and explain several things about this vine before you plant it in your yard. Because I do think some people are going to love this vine and some people are going to hate it. And here's why. I personally love it and I love it even though it does pop up in a lot of places in the garden. And I will tell you why further on into this video. But first, I do want to reiterate, it pops up wherever it wants to pop up. It can germinate, you know, by seed, of course. But it also creates these um, little baby plants uh, via roots uh, that spread around under the ground. So, in other words, that's another reason why it's called Maypop. Is because it can just pop up out of the ground in pretty much any area a few feet away from the main plant. In other words, it's not that it's just seeding around, but it's also um, popping up in your lawn, popping up in other beds, popping up nearby, and spreading under the ground. So it's very important to know this because not everyone is okay with a more wild garden. I, of course, love wild gardens and I love vines and while it does pop up even in places that I don't intend for it to pop up I think it's worth it and the reason that I think this vine is worth it is because it is a host plant for a specific fritillary butterfly and you're going to see footage of that butterfly in this video and what I love about this vine is these butterflies are beautiful and they require this vine for their caterpillars to eat the leaves of. And so what happens is a butterfly, a female butterfly will lay eggs on the leaves of this vine or near this vine and then those uh, eggs will hatch into little tiny, the first instar of a caterpillar stage. And this caterpillar will grow and it will eat these leaves and as it grows it will get larger and it will eventually 
uh, walk away, <laughs> and it will find a suitable location for it to create a chrysalis. So what's really cool about this vine is typically if you have enough of this vine, or if it has been happy because you've put it in the right place, then this vine will grow pretty decent size and it will have enough food to feed these caterpillars, which in turn they go, they create a chrysalis and they become a butterfly. And typically what happens is you actually get to see almost, if not all, of the life stages of this particular butterfly right before your eyes, right in your garden, if you plant this vine. So that's just, that's why I love this plant. That's why I grow it is because I just love to see the full life cycle of this butterfly. This butterfly has silvery spots on it. So when the sun hits this butterfly, it sparkles. And I don't know a lot of butterflies around here that do that. I think the pipevine swallowtail kind of has a similar effect because it's blue on the base of its wings will sparkle. But other than that, um, there's not a lot of the silvery or sparkly or like iridescent type of coloring going on other than in these two butterflies. So I think it's just really cool. Um, I'll find the name of the specific fritillary and I'll put it on, put it in the video for you guys because I think it's super important to get that correct. But the, um, the outside of the wings, it, they're very bright orange and beautiful and very vivid. So you can't really miss this butterfly. It's, it stands out, but it's not as large as, you know, the swallowtails. So it's smaller than the swallowtails, but it stands out because of its coloring and just the sheen in certain lighting situations. Highly recommend, recommend this vine just for that reason alone. Um, what's so cool about this is I have this vine growing right in front of my patio. And so what happens is the butterflies come by, they lay their eggs, and then those eggs turn into caterpillars. And the caterpillars look really cool too. The caterpillars are awesome. I'll try to insert some either video or photos of the caterpillars if I can in this video as well. And... You get to see them munching away on the leaves, and then they make their chrysalis, and what's really cool is they made a chrysalis in multiple places on my patio. So typically they like to pick my chairs. They like to actually crawl up the legs of my patio chairs, and then they will create a chrysalis on the back of the chair. And what's really cool about that is it's right in front of my window, so I have a great view of the caterpillars creating their chrysalis right there, right in front of my art studio, and it's just epic. I love it. And if the birds don't find it first, which happens a lot more than you think, uh, then it will eventually turn into a butterfly if all goes well. And so I have footage in this video of the butterfly coming out of its chrysalis, and I hope you enjoy that. But another thing to note is that the fruits on this vine are edible. The fruits are edible. Um, I personally haven't found my favorite way to prepare these fruits or, you know, a, a favorite recipe to put them in or anything like that. Um, I find it a little bit of just, to me, I, I'm not a bit, I'm not big into cooking and I'm not big in, into baking and making things like that. So it, to me, they're a little bit more trouble than they're worth to, for me to eat. So I often leave them for the wildlife to eat. And I will tell you the cardinals and other birds will eat the seeds. So it's got multiple wildlife uses. Also, the flowers are wonderful for hummingbirds. You're going to see footage in this video of a hummingbird coming by to get the nectar out of the flowers. And of course, the bees love it, especially carpenter bees. I think if I read correctly in my research, carpenter bees and passion flower have co-evolved in our area. So super important pollinators of passion vine and it's just so fun to see them hanging out in the blooms especially as it gets toward evening times you know the bees are kind of tired maybe they're drunk off the nectar I don't know but they tend to kind of just laze around in the blooms and it's very fun to see so if you have any questions at all about passion flower please leave them in the comments down below let me know what you thought about this video again you will be warned, this plant will pop up all over the place. So if you are a formal gardener, just don't even bother. Just don't plant it. You're going to be upset. You're going to be mad. Um, I'm not a formal gardener. I like a little bit of mess. It's better for wildlife to have a little bit of mess. It's better for wildlife to have a little bit of vines uh, all over as long as they're native. 
And, you know, it's great for the butterflies and the bees and the hummingbirds. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next Native Plant Profile. Bye! I just added some new original paintings to the shop. Go to macylou.com to check out the new pieces. I also have prints available as well as different categories of products. I have a $12 and under section and a $25 and under section as well because I believe every human being deserves to have art in their home and to feel cozy and comfortable wherever they live. I also have a contact page where you can easily get in touch with me at your convenience for art commissions and business inquiries. Just put a quick subject line such as, hey, I'd like an art commission, and then in the message section, put in detail about what type of commission you are wanting. Also, feel free to use the contact form as a way to ask any questions you may have about the art or the shop. Thanks for all of your support, no matter what form it takes. To support the channel, like the video, comment, and subscribe. You can also support my work by buying art from me at macylou.com. Thanks for watching! <laughs>